In this video, we want to talk about Spring Boot Startup projects. In this video, I'm using an article which is on our website, springbootstutorial.com slash springbootstartupprojects. The link to this you'd find in the description of the video. So we'll understand what Spring Boot Startup projects are. Spring Boot Startup projects is one of the key things that is provided by Spring Boot. So Spring Boot provides varied range of startup projects. So if I want to develop a web application, there's a starter. If I want to develop a batch application, there is a starter. If I want to develop a SOAP web service, there is a starter for that. So basically what Spring Boot does is it looks at what are the typical things that are needed to develop a specific kind of application. So let's say I want to develop a web application. Spring Boot says, okay, you want to develop a web application. You need these dependencies, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And once these dependencies are added in, Spring Boot also auto configures them. So you add in Spring MVC, Spring Boot auto configures, uh, let's say a dispatcher servlet, a error page, um, web jars, and things like that. So that's the concept of startup projects. You get all the dependencies and you get all the auto configuration. So you add in a startup project, you get all the dependencies that are needed for that kind of application and you get all the configuration that is needed. So if I want to develop a web application, if I use Spring Boot Startup Web, I would be up and running in let's say 15, 20 minutes, not more than that. So I can go to the Spring Initializer website, uh, I can create a simple website, a web project using Spring Boot Startup Web and I would be up and running with, with, within less than 15 to 20 minutes. So in this video, let's look at in depth about the Spring Boot Startup Projects stuff. So what are the features that are provided by Spring Boot Startup Projects? We'll look at an example, Spring Boot Startup Web, and we'll also get an overview of the different startup projects which are provided by Spring Boot. If you are a beginner and you don't know what Spring, Spring MVC and Spring Boot are all about, then I would really recommend you to go through these videos which are present in here. Also present in here are a few introductions to Eclipse, Maven, JUnit and Mockito as well. So, why do we need Spring Boot Startup Projects? So if you have experience developing with Spring MVC, you'd know that when I create an application, any web application, I need a lot of dependencies. So I have to decide what dependency to use and which version of it to use. So this is an extract from some of the dependencies we used in our Spring MVC course. So you can see that I have to decide that I have to use this version of this dependency, this version of this dependency, this version of this dependency and things like that. And this provides validation, this provides data binding, logging, and other things. So also, other than that, we needed to add in a lot of configuration. So I have to configure a view resolver, I have to configure a web jar, I have to configure a message bundle, I have to configure a dispatcher servlet. Um, in case I need the database, I need to configure a database as well. So basically, whenever I start a new project, I have to decide what dependencies to use, what versions of them to use, what configuration I have to put in, a lot of things that you would need to do. So why should a developer worry about all that? Can I take it? Can I take the responsibility of that? That's basically what the Spring Boot Starter Web does. Spring Boot Starter Web is a, one of the Spring Boot Startup projects. So if you look at the definition of Spring Boot uh, of starters on Spring Boot documentation, then it says something like, like this. So it says starters are a set of convenient dependency descriptors. You get one-stop shop for all Spring and related technology. So you don't really need to hunt for dependencies. So once you add in a Spring Boot Startup Web, you get all the dependencies that you need to develop a typical web application for free. Uh, how do you create a simple REST services web application with Spring Initializer? You can go to the website startspring.io. It's a great place to bootstrap your web applications. So you can go there, you can put in a group ID of your choice, an artifact ID of your choice. You can choose web, actuator, and dev tools, and you should be ready with a simple project. So once you generate a project, you can import it into Eclipse. You can find uh, simple videos down below, I mean, in the description of this video, which would help you to uh, do that very easily. So we, I'll provide a link to the starter uh, Spring Initializer video. Uh, so you can use that to create the project as well. So Spring Boot Starter Web brings in basically two important features. One is compatible dependencies or what dependencies that you need and the auto configuration. So once you add Spring Boot Starter Web into your project, so let's say you have a Maven project and you add this dependency in and you go to Maven dependencies and see, you'll get all these dependencies for free. So you get all the dependencies of varied kind. So you get Spring Core, Beans, 
context AOP, Web MVC, Spring MVC is the default framework. You get Jackson for data binding, you get validation. You also get an embedded servlet container, which is Tomcat. You have options to switch to other embedded servlet containers like Undertow or Jetty, but the default is Tomcat. And you have logging, so the default logging framework is logback, but you can switch to log4j too as well. So this, so as soon as I add in a simple dependency, so as soon as I add in these four lines of code, I get all these dependencies which you are seeing in the screen right now. That's the magic of Spring Boot Starter Projects. The other important thing that you need to understand is auto configuration. So what Spring Boot does is with this feature called auto configuration, it sees that, okay, there's Spring MVC on the class path. So probably the user wants to configure a, a dispatcher servlet. He needs an error page. Probably he would uh, want to configure web jars as well. Uh, probably like if I add Spring Boot security on into the class path, then it says, okay, probably he needs, he wants to secure everything up. So Spring Boot by default provides a little bit of configuration and that's called auto configuration. And Spring Boot Startup Web, for example, it auto configures a dispatcher servlet, uh, error page, it auto configures web jars to manage your Stat static dependencies, it provides an embedded servlet container, Tomcat is the default one. So if you want to look at a complete list of auto configuration things that are done by Spring Boot Startup Web, you can go to this package. So this is Spring Boot Auto Configure Jar. So if you open up the Spring Boot Auto Configure Jar and go to the package all Spring Framework Boot Auto Configure Web, you would see that there are a lot of stuff that are auto configured by the Spring Boot Startup Web. So these are all the web stuff that is auto configured. Okay. So that's what a typical startup project does, right? So it provides dependencies and it provides auto configuration. So what are the other options, startup project options I have other than Spring Boot Startup Web? So if you want to develop SOAP web services, the option you would need to choose is Spring Boot Startup Web Services. If you want to use web and RESTful applications, that's the one which we are looking until now. If you want to write unit tests, or if you want to write integration tests on a Spring App Boot application, you have this starter. This startup brings in JUnit, Mockito, and also a couple of assertion frameworks, which are really, really cool. JDBC, HitOS, you have a security starter, and you have a data JPA starter, you have a data REST starter. You can look up our channel for more videos on these specific starters as well. But in this video, we are just giving you an overview of the Spring Boot, starter pro Spring Boot starters. So these are the different starters that are present in here. And there are also starters for technical stuff. So actuator to monitor your application and trace it. And we also we already looked at the fact that Tomcat is the default embedded servlet container. But there are other starters for Undertow, Jetty as well. You can use these servlet containers as well. And obviously you have uh, starters for logging as well. So that's all the things that are important to know about. At In 28 Minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you would love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web applications, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best uses of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28Minutes signing off.